Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the cloud computing architecture, guys. Guys, I think this question might be asked in our examination, guys, because this is the basic question, right? So you can say this is a commonly asked question about architecture, right? Yes. So let us go through the architecture. Okay. So let us start. So basically, the architecture diagram will look in this way, guys. Right? Yes. So here we are having the client infrastructure. So basically whatever the client will be seeing, right? So he can manage the infrastructure and all those things, right? His account. Okay. So all those things will come under the client infrastructure. So this is the front end part. Okay. Whereas he using the internet will connect to the back end and use the resources which are, which belong to the back end guys. Got it? Yes. So using internet, he will connect to, he can use application service, run cloud, storage, infrastructure, manage and security. So these are some components you can say of your cloud. Okay. Guys, we'll be discussing about each and every component. So don't worry guys. Okay. Yes. So this is a basic cloud computing architecture. You can say, okay. Yes. So firstly, let us go through the front end and back end definitions. After that, we'll be moving on to the other things guys. Okay. Yes. Okay. So front end. The front end is used by the client. So basically who will be using the front end guys? The client will be using, he will be modifying things. He can change things. Okay. So it contains a client side interface and applications that are required to access the cloud platform. Okay. So basically what kind of applications we mean to say like Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, any kind of a web browser guys. So all the cloud computing providers will have a website guys. So directly from the website only you can access them. You can use them. You can create some virtual machines. You can run them. You can run some programs on them. You can run some threads on them like that. You can do many things from the front end directly. Okay. Whereas a backend, the backend is used by the service provider. So basically who can perform any kind of operations on the backend. So if you want, if he want to change something, he can change it. So who will be, who can change it? Service provider. Okay. So it manages all resources that are required to provide cloud computing. So basically how can cloud, cloud computing be possible with the help of these components only? The backend is the main key things guys. Okay. Yes. So now your question will be, okay, so we got some idea, but what are those components? You told some names right so what are those first of all please give some clarity you will be having a doubt right yes so let us discuss about the components now okay so the first top component if you remember was client infrastructure right yes so client infrastructure is the front end component okay it provides a gui that is nothing but graphical user interface to interact with the cloud so basically the user should interact somewhere right yes so can we say the uh, the uh, user might know coding he will uh, use command line prompt or something so that is a complex thing right so that is the reason why most of these websites use graphical user interfaces so all those icons will be there you can click them so basically how we run an application on our pc or our laptop so in the same way the website will also look guys okay so that is your client infrastructure so that is what the infrastructure is made so that's nothing but the front end which he sees okay similarly the second is nothing but the application right so you can just uh, cross check guys i'm going in the same path okay so application so what is application so the application may be any software or platform that a client wants to access okay so from here on i'll be taking multiple examples guys because we should get some idea right yes so assume that you are accessing your gmail guys Okay, so what is Gmail? So basically that is a mail, ser mail service provider, you can say, right? So that, that service, using that service, you can send and receive mails. Yes, yes. You can do various operations, but I'm discussing only about that. Okay, yes. So basically this is a type of application, right? So the application may be a software or any platform that a client wants to access. So basically if you are accessing this and if these things are stored in a cloud, so then this is nothing but the application which you are using, guys. Got it? Yes. Similarly, services. So basically any cloud computing provider will provide you three types of services, guys. Guys, we'll be discussing in detail about these three services with advantages, disadvantages and all those things. So don't worry. So in this lecture, let us go through some introduction, you can say. Okay, yes. So a cloud service provider manages that which type of service you are going to use. Okay, so you might be thinking that we could only do some kind of operations on cloud right no you are wrong guys so basically we can do various operations like if you want to just run an application so basically i think a few of you used some applications like i love pdf right so basically that what that website does so basically that website helps you in combining pdfs to do operations on pdfs so basically it is an application right some kind of application or software you can say right yes so if you are if you are buying a cloud 
to just to do those kind of operations like merging pdfs like that so that comes under software as a service so basically you are using that service to do some application right yes so that comes under software as a service okay similarly okay so let us go through the definitions directly okay yes okay so this is clear so now let us go through sas so the shortcut is software as a service as a sas guys okay so this is a mainly for the front end users guys okay this is service provider provides a customer with a subscription or use of a software so it might be a gmail or web apps right yes okay you can even write google drive one drive and all those things will also be coming here guys okay yes similarly pass platform as a service so this service is used in software development testing and maintenance so basically i think every one of you at least once coded in python right yes so sometimes your your python code you might want to publish it online right yes so at that time you can use a platform as a service so this is a website guys huruku okay so in that website you can just create a project okay and you can just launch your application there so basically you will be getting a link so whenever someone clicks on that link automatically your application will open in web view so basically on chrome only you can use the application so in that way so that comes under platform as a service so basically they are providing you a platform to run your software right so that is the reason why it is called as platform as a service whereas infrastructure as a service okay so assume that you want to do some crazy things right so some kind of application you want to test with the various systems so at that time you want a proper infrastructure right so your first system you want ios your second system you want windows so in at that time you want some infrastructure and similarly you want some specific ram so for this you want 2 gb ram for this you want 4 gb ram for this you want 8 gb ram like that there are some requirements which you want to test your application so at that time you will be using a service provider called as iaas okay that is nothing but infrastructure as a service so this service offers a rental of servers operating systems virtual machines storage etc so the best example is aws guys okay yes so i think now you got some basic idea right guys we'll be discussing about these services in detail in a single lecture guys like i think it will be three lectures i think so for each and every cloud service okay yes so don't worry okay yes so runtime cloud so the next part is a runtime cloud right the below okay so runtime cloud provides the execution and running environment for the virtual machines so basically if you build a virtual machine using a, a aws or anything so somewhere it should run right so this is the component which helps in it so runtime cloud similarly storage the next component so storage is simple right so whenever an application is running or anything so it needs some storage to store those running files and all those things right so that concept is storing storage is the one of the most important component of cloud computing it provides a huge amount of storage capacity in the cloud to store and manage data got it yes infrastructure so the last thing is infra infrastructure so it includes a hardware and software components such as servers storage network devices virtualization software etc so basically your ram virtual machines everything will be considered here guys in infrastructure component okay similarly we are having management security and in between we are having internet right yes so management so basically to manage all these components so basically let me show you the diagram management will be on a side guys okay yes so management you will be writing here so basically to uh, manage all these components you will be using this manage component similarly security to secure all these components you will be using this and internet is the connection between your client front end and the back end or you can say client and the server client and your cloud provider service provider okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea about the architecture right yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea so in the next lecture let us go through the differences between traditional computing and cloud computing guys okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching